So last time we finished up with getting the KBD head drop, and this time I'm starting out since I just hit 1,000 reward points uh, by making the Black Slayer Helm, uh, which is kind of exclusive. I'm actually pretty happy about this. I believe I'm the first hardcore with it. Uh, not that it's like the biggest deal in the world, but just kind of cool, you know, went out, risked out KBD, and have a little bit to show for it on the account. So I guess kind of like my first thing to show off. But anyways, I got an elite clue that doesn't require an Ami of the Damned, though. I've got insane luck with Amis of the Damned here. Uh, but I just had to get three fine cloth um, to make split bark legs. Since I can't go to the Chaos Fanatic to get my split bark drops, uh, I had to do the Shades of Morton mini game, which is actually the first time I've done this, and had some pretty ridiculous luck with Amies of the Damned, which is going to come in handy later for Master Clues. Uh, but I got my split bark legs made, and I got three out of the four fine cloth that I need for the body. Uh, so we'll work on that some other time, but I'm gonna see if I can complete the elite clue even though I've had pretty much terrible luck with uh, Elites and masters lately, but I'll see what I can do uh, Since I put in about an hour plus uh, of effort to make the split bark legs Well, unfortunately yet again. I wasn't able to uh, complete my clue uh, But I have had pretty damn good luck with my abbey demon tasks lately I think in the first two days that I've gotten uh, since I've gotten 87 or 85 slayer uh, this is my fourth Abbey Demon task. I got a whip off the first one, and I think I've had 11 superiors total, which has been kind of ridiculous. Got a Dragon Spear without a Ring of Wealth on, uh, which I think is my third D Spear with no Ring of Wealth, and ninth total on the account. Uh, so that's kind of insane. But I am about a thousand kills drive a whip now, and obviously still don't have an imbued heart, which I think I'm at a, uh, coming up on a hundred superiors. I think I'm in the 90s now. So I'm still trying to get that for my Zora kills because that's just going to be insane for it. Really, I'm hoping I can get it before 93. Anyways, I wanted to show you guys how I safe spot the marble gar uh, gargoyles on the southwestern side of the Slayer Tower. So basically, uh, you just walk all the way to the west and then you attack it with the crystal bow. It doesn't matter if you have walk or run on. If you have a rune crossbow, you want to have walk on though and then walk up to the max range distance. And that's going to put you out of his uh, combat range completely. Uh, and the only other thing is uh, take note where I'm standing, which is basically just one step south of the stairs uh, or the lamp that's at the stairs. Uh, you want to be in this row as well, which is the southern side of the opening because it just blocks the marble gargoyle perfectly. If you're in the northern one, then you're actually going to, um, uh, it's going to be blocked against the wall and you won't be able to hit it from there. Alright, so after only two days of grinding, I've actually gone from 85 to 87 slayers, so I actually cancelled my task streak. I uh, figured it would be the most opportune to do it since I was at a very uh, new task number. Uh, well, I, that doesn't make sense. Uh, I had just hit the next 50 increment, basically. Uh, so I got my 225 bonus points, and I didn't feel bad about Turiel skipping from that point because it just didn't matter too much because I don't care about my task streak at all as long as I get the 255 bonus points. If I get that, I can cancel the task and I'd be just fine with it. But it took me probably about an hour to finally get a Kraken task, maybe a little bit longer. And I did one kill at the boss uh, after doing a few of the, the little guys uh, just to see if I can get some lucky drop, some crazy RNG on just the one kill count. And obviously it didn't work out for me. Uh, but after 93 Kraken kills, I was finally able to get the Trident. Meaning, now I'm going to make a Dragon Square Shield and do some Barrows grind because I've really, really been looking forward to this grind and I wanted to wait for the Trident to do so. So I figured I'd teach you guys a method on how to kite the Melee Brothers. Uh, something that a guy named Le Purist taught me about three years ago when I started Iron Foe. He was a self-sufficient Ironman that, uh, that had been using it for a while to save supplies. Uh, so basically what it is, and you know, there's like three, probably three steps that go with this, but basically what it is, is you're using the sarcophagus to block the Barrows Brothers. Uh, now, Darak and Guthan, the ones on the east side, are a little bit different because their sarcophagus faces uh, east-west, whereas Torag and Varak on the west side, theirs faces north-south, so it's oriented differently. Uh, and because of how the east and west pathing mechanics uh, work on the game, uh, that changes how you do this method for each one of them. But basically, you need to know a few things. One, you need to, to manually cast a spell because if you set autocast and if you use that, you'll actually lose a tick. Um, if I attack him right now, my character will walk out here, wait, and then cast. So when you run around, um, you actually can't make it in time and he will hit you every single time. But if you manually cast, you don't lose that tick, your account attacks right away. So you need to know that you need to uh, manually cast every single time. You need to have walk on um, because if you run, your account's gonna take an extra step. You're gonna end up right here instead of right here uh, when you attack him, meaning he's gonna hit you again. And the last thing you need to do, and some people still don't know that you can do this, you hold down the, the control button and you click to run. 
and that's important because you want to do that after you attack the brother. You want to manually cast, attack the brother, walk out. You know, I've got my walk on. Then you want to control click to run around the corner to hide. Uh, so like I said, Darak and Guthin you can only do on two sides. You can only do on the north side and the south side, but you can't use the east and west because of how the mechanics work with the uh, sarcophagus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack. I'm going to click, uh, control click over here to run this way, and then I'm going to control click one more time over here to run all the way around. If I attacked and then control clicked right here right away, uh, half the time my account will end up running this way, so I'd run right through them and I'd get hit. So basically, I'm going to attack, I'm going to control click to sprint, and control click again, and I'm in the safe spot. Now if you want to save some run energy, because you do need run energy for this method, uh, what you can do is you can attack, you can walk at first, and then when you get about at this corner, then you can control click and you'll still make it around. That's what I usually do, just because you have to wait for the time to, uh, for Darak to walk all the way around anyways. Uh, so we'll do this at Darak and Guthin, and then I'll show you how to do it at Torag and Varric, which is just slightly different. Oh, by the way, it's just the same with the Trident. All you're doing is you're not manually casting a spell because you're already manually casting the Trident spell. So you can just click and go. It's just as simple as that. So the trident's a lot simpler, but most people that are going to use this method are probably going to use Ivan Blast. If you're not, you can also do it with Fire Strike or whatever else, but Ivan Blast is really the way to go before trident. Okay, so I'm not going to explain the full method again since we just went through that, but uh, as I said, Torag and Varric are a little bit different because their sarcophagus faces north-south, uh, and because of how that works, because there's only one, two, three, four steps on this side, and one, two, three, four, five steps on this side, you can actually hit them on every single corner. Uh, so I'm just going to show you that you can do it here and oh um, on these two you're going to control click every single time you're never going to do any walking uh, because you have to get around the corner a little bit quicker so I'm going to attack control click to run attack control click to run remember my walk is on so when I'm attacking I'm not control clicking and that's basically how it works. Uh, so when I do Varric I'll do a full speed kill without any interruptions with the trident to show you that it's just the same now, if you're using a Tome of Fire and Fire spells, if you're using Slayer Dart or Magic Dark, whatever you want to use, as long as it's the same attack speed as uh, a regular Mage spell, as long as um, you're not using something like Range, it doesn't work with Range because Range puts that one tick delay in, uh, you're going to do just fine. So you can use those spells, no problem. I prefer using an Ivan Blast, and if I have it on the account, I'd much rather use the Trident, which is even easier because you don't have to click the spell every time. Uh, but basically, you can do this on the Melee Brothers. Just remember that the Eastern ones are different than the Western ones, and they take a little bit longer to do. But it's a great way to do Barrows without using Prey Pots, without using food. Uh, you really save a ton of supplies on your Iron Man doing it this way. So I think so far I'm somewhere around 200 Barrows chests in since I've gotten my Trident. Uh, I think I've gone from about 260 to like 450 kill count. And I only do the Barrows Brothers, I don't get any of the reward potential or kill count downstairs, and that's just because I'm not concerned with the additional loot. Since I've got the Mortain and Hard Diaries done, I get enough Death Runes and Chaos Runes to keep up with my Trident, so I really just want to get the armor and weapon pieces done and get out of here, actually. Uh, but it would be pointless for me to show all of my Barrows loot, so basically, you could just look at this neat little graphic. This is what I have so far, and you can see easily the ones that I'm missing. Uh, but anyways, uh, I have been trying to do clues from time to time. This was very helpful uh, since I got the Bandos plate body, which is going to be needed for, I think, a master clue, even though I need to get a BGS for it. Uh, but that is going to come in handy later on. I've gotten a lot of the clue requirements out of the way. And I took some time to go ahead and sell my Alkables to the Tybo 1A General Store since I get, I think it's uh, 1.75 times the low alk value from that store. And when I hit hop limit on the last round of stuff, I just finished it up while alking and training some agility. But from that, I was uh, I apparently had 9.6 mil worth of Alkables from Slayer, and I think that's only from like level 82 Slayer, so that's really not bad. Uh, but it's, it's my first green cash deck on the account, so I was actually kind of happy about that. And finally, I've put a lot of work into this, and I wanted to finally give this a go when I got the Trident. Uh, I tried to get the Aram Robe top first, but I wasn't able to do so. But I'm finally getting around to my first Zora kill on the account. And I was pretty nervous about this. Actually, I've been basically dead scared about this because I'm sure this is the way that my hardcore is going to go out. Uh, but I thought that was going to be to a DC. Now, initially, I planned on doing a method where I block most of the mage phase damage. And that's the one that can hit me with the range hits without me expecting it. 
Uh, but I decided to just completely try to beast out this kill uh, by attacking all phases using both combat styles instead of, you know, trying to play it like a wimp. And that's mainly because I don't remember how I used to do that exactly. I used to do that method on my ultimate Iron Man. So I think what I'm going to do, get this kill knocked out for the diary, hopefully. And then uh, when I get into the Zora Grand later on, before I really get completely decked out in gear, like the Serp Helm and all that stuff, I think I am going to try to relearn that method on my Ultimate Airman and then apply that to this account uh, to do so, to really get the Zora Grand going fully. Uh, but for now, I really just want to get one kill out of the way for the Diary and uh, then maybe come back some other day and grind out a little bit harder and really hit it a lot harder when I get the Occult Necklace at 93 Slayer. But a 234 kill for one kill count, I was actually pretty damn happy with that to have like seven food left. That's actually pretty, pretty decently good and a lot better than I expected myself to do on it. And one last little treat for you guys. I have worked my way up to uh, 76 herb lore, meaning I hit a plus five boost and I'm making Sarah Brews on the account now. That means I've got Sarah Brews, I've got Super Restores, and I've got Stamina Pots. So as long as I get 70 Agility, I've got everything I need to do to do some Zoyana kills. I don't know how much I want to get into that yet, but sometime in the next week or two, I do want to at least attempt one or two trips just to see if I can get lucky, get an early drop. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time.